Right, okay, so where we're going to start from, um, for the coursework, um, what we have is we are launching a projectile of some sort. Okay, no giggling. So, <laughs> okay. Right, we're launching a projectile of some sort. So we have, I don't know, whatever it is, we might have a, a bowl or something like that. And we have a velocity vector. We're given this, we know it's going to be 20 metres per second, um, and we also know the angle as well, theta, that it's going to be launched at. So th this is um, we, what we know. So we have V here. Okay. So the problem uh, for the coursework is that we need to produce the whole trajectory uh, from the launch point essentially until this projectile hits the ground again. Uh, and that's what we need to calculate. And we're going to calculate that using an equation of motion. Uh, so the, the first job um, to do this calculation is to, um, because we're not using an entirely a vector approach, we're going to split it up into its two components and sort of keep things simple. So that's what we need to do. We need to split this velocity vector into its y velocity and into its x velocity. Okay, And then use the equations of motion um, to then uh, work out um, its position. And that's what we're going to plot. And that's, that's what the coursework asks for. It's, it, it's asks where, where is the position of the projectile. Now, we know the projectile um, is going to do something like this. Because okay, we just, you know, once it's fired, it's kind of... It's going to arc over. At this point here, okay, y is actually zero. because that's on, on the y-axis. So it's a good way to sort of stop your problem, actually, because once your um, points or your position of your projectile as we reached y equals zero, or y maybe just less than zero, because we're dealing with computers, it's hard to ask if it's exactly zero, um, you can stop the problem. So it suggests you can put it in a while loop, actually, while y is, while the, sorry, while the position of the projectile the y position of the projectile is greater than zero, then carry on calculating. Once it goes below zero, then you probably calculated a point slightly under the x-axis, and you could just stop the problem then. So it saves you uh, doing a, a for loop. Now, the, where that wouldn't apply is if we, had, if we did that in a game application, that wouldn't work because we don't want it to calculate all in one go. Again, you want to ask it a bit at a time. And that's really what the numerical techniques and the lecture notes are getting at, is we just calculate over a small delta t. But for, our, for the coursework purposes, we can calculate this all at once. We don't need to do it in little bits. Okay. So, we have this first job then of uh, de decomposing the velocity vector. Um, so, we're just going to... What should we use? Let's use red and blue. Okay, let's get a deeper red. Okay, so we've got a vector component along here, which is Vx. is 1. And we have a component up here, which is Vy. Okay, so we've decomposed the velocity vector. Okay, V is the resultant of these two vectors, Vx. Sorry, these two vector components, Vx and Vy. Okay. Right, uh, let's then work out what we've got to do next. The, we've got to think, what's the problem, what we're trying to solve? Well, what we're trying to solve for is P, the position. So the position of the projectile in x and y, two dimensions, okay, and that's what we want to be able to plot. Um, there is another problem, uh, not problem, but there's another thing in the course where we talked about calculating the gradient, but that's just the, the gradient between two points, that's the gradient of a line, that's fairly easy. Okay, so sticking to this problem then, what do we do next? Well, what we want to do next is um, apply an equation of motion to it, okay, and then calculate what we're after which is displacement, this P, where is where this point? So the one we could use, uh, we could use S equals, sorry, let me just undo that, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Okay, that's just the standard uh, equation of motion. Okay, we are using, our, our problem is a gravity problem. Um, so our acceleration is gravity. So we can modify this to say that S is equal to UT minus a half GT squared. 
Okay, G is um, 9.81. Okay, that, that minus 9.81, that's why we have the minus sign there. Okay, so this becomes the thing we have to solve. Now, I've not... I've put S down here as though it's um, a kind of a particle problem, but it, it, uh, sorry, a one-dimensional problem, but really I mean a displacement here. I'm looking at two components here. I'm looking at S um, in X and, and in Y. In other words, how far has it travelled in X and how far has it travelled in Y? How far in X is trivial, so we're going to concentrate on Y. Okay. So, in the, what we now want to do is to, to perform this calculation. So, without thinking about how we put it on a computer and put it in a loop, let's just kind of solve it as it is. Um, looking at this equation here, the way we would solve for each component, if you think about it, is simply uh, putting in the velocity, which is this u in this equation, for first for y and then first for x. You agree? That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So, let's just do exactly that. So I, am, I, know I'm, I know I'm going over a, a certain amount of time. Okay, so we could, we could do, uh, right, uh, let's do an actual calculation rather than, you know, stick with these um, symbols. So let's do an actual problem. So let's say we're going to look after t equals 0 0.1 seconds. Okay, now that is probably going to mean, we can, if we stick with that, we're probably going to make delta t 0.1. That's our time increment, okay. Um, we may be, we don't know how long this is going to fly for, because if we don't know, that's the problem. The problem to be solved, actually. Depends on how the initial velocity and the launch angle. Um, so we're not sure how long it's going to go on for, but we do want to be able to sort of um, work out the current position of it um, at each of these points here. Okay. So we can use um, initial conditions, we can apply this, okay, because we can work out the position, because we know what u is, but we don't know what the velocity is after a certain amount of time, okay, so we have to, therefore, look at this one as well, sorry, not that one, okay, so we've got v equals u plus at, because we need to know the velocity, because we have to have the velocity to put that into the other equation, okay, to work out the displacement, how far the thing's gone. So, we can start at either of these places. The, the, the best starting point, obviously, would be here, because we need to know the velocity. We could start at the first one, because we, we know the initial velocity, but probably doesn't make sense. Okay, so what we can therefore calculate after um, is the velocity at each point in time. Okay. So if we just do the first one here then, we've got S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And what we're looking for is what's happened after a small amount of time. Okay, where is this thing gone? Okay, so we've got S equals u, which is our start velocity, let's say that was 20 metres per second, so we might have something like this, 20, I'm going to times that by 0 0.1, okay, minus 9.8 over 2, times 0 0.1 squared, okay. That's not much use to me because it doesn't give me a resolved component. Okay, so you see the problem with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, instead of um, putting 20 in here, so I'm just going to get rid of... Uh, that's the Okay, let's get rid of this 20 here. Because, and now I'm going to make this SY. So what I'm looking for is I'm just simply result. I'm only now focusing on the Y component. So that's SY. So the velocity in Y, if you remember, just applying a normal vector formula, um, is V sine theta. Okay. So that's what I'm doing, just to show you that, substituting that in. So I do SY equals V sine theta times the time step that I'm doing, minus 9.8 over 2 and then t 
t squared. Okay, that gives me sy. What that tells me is how far the projectile has travelled in the y direction. Yeah, okay. Yeah, everyone happy with that? Okay. Doesn't tell me anything about the velocity. Okay, that's, a, that's an issue. I don't know the velocity. I, I, know the velo I do know the velocity because I'm using the starting velocity. What I don't know is the velocity of the next step. Does that make sense? I don't know the velocity of what, what, what's now the velocity. Okay. So, but that's worked and that's absolutely fine. And I've calculated SY. Now, what we're going to do then is we're going to um, do a similar thing for calculating SX. How far has it gone in the X direction? Okay, so let's do that now. Okay, so we apply the same sort of thing, but this, what, what, if you think about it, as we've discussed in the lecture, um, there is no component of the force of gravity in the horizontal component. Okay, it's not possible. As I've said, you never see gravity making things move sideways, do you? It's always downwards. So therefore, we can ignore that, that gravity term completely. And therefore, S equals UT plus a half AT squared reduces to its much simpler form of just S equals UT, or speed, uh, sorry, distance equals speed times time, if you want to make it all kind of scalar. So instead of S equals UT plus a half AT squared, so we're thinking about in X now, we have S equals UT. But remember, we're focusing just in the x direction, so let's just make this the x displacement, um, how far has it travelled in x. Sx equals ut. Okay, t was 0.1, remember? Yeah? So, how far it's gone in x is simply equal to our velocity in the x direction, which is v cos theta, okay, remember, because we're resolving it, times the time interval of 0.1 seconds, okay, whatever that equals, okay. Yeah, happy with that, and that gives me my first point, in fact. In fact, I could just actually push these figures straight in now, so my first point, if you like, would be, um, I'm going to put another number on here to indicate it's our first calculation, it's not very bit clumsy, but you get the idea. So I'm putting a 1 on top of there to indicate it's my first iteration, just so I can differentiate it between the next one. So P, S, X1, and S, Y1 gives me my first point on the trajectory. Yeah, happy with that? And what I'm showing is, is along here, if we go back to um, our curve, you can see, I don't know where it will be, it will be somewhere right here, yeah? I'm just on my first point of the projection, uh, sorry, of the trajectory there, okay. Right, okay. So, now, what do I do? Because I'm, I'm back in my step again. I need to repeat the process, but the velocity's changed, hasn't it? It's got to have changed, okay, because it's not a constant velocity problem. It's a problem that's under, under acceleration. Because we have an acceleration, of course that change, that's the definition of acceleration, is the change, the rate of change of velocity. So we, we come back to our other equation, okay, which we um, highlighted up here. Okay, just do this again. Okay. So we can use this one uh, to calculate our velocity at this step, at the, at the same step as well. It's one way of doing it. So therefore what we do with that is, again we need to work out, the, actually, the only thing we need to work out is the uh, vertical velocity because we're assuming the horizontal velocity is constant. Remember uh, Newton's uh, first law that if, if, if something goes on, uh, uh, if something is set off, an object is set off at a velocity, the velocity will not change unless it's influenced by some other external force, some other external factor. We, say, we argued that gravity has no effect whatsoever, so therefore Vx is always equal to Vx. Okay, so we never actually need to calculate, we've already calculated it because we've done it from um, simply being the cosine of theta, Vx, V cos theta. We never actually need to deal with that again, we can always just reuse it. So therefore, we're only really focusing on calculating Vy. So, Vy, sorry, use a white pen. So Vy, for the next step, okay, so I'll put a little two there to indicate we're on our kind of next step is going to be equal to, okay, right, what's this 
velocity here then? And it's the only one we've got, isn't it? We know we don't know any other velocity, so it has to be the velocity at the beginning, okay? Which is this kind of previous step almost, or it is in fact. So we've got this other velocity, which was um, v sine theta minus a half 9.81 t, which is times 0 0.1. Okay. So I'm going to call this V2. Why? Okay. So this gives us our velocity. So this is the velocity, coming back to this again, that we think the uh, projectile is at um, at this point here. Okay? So that's what we think it's at. Okay. So now we're in a loop. We're either in a loop or we've been requested to calculate this again. Okay, for, our, for the purpose of the coursework, we're in a loop. We're just kind of calculating the trajectory. So what do we know at this point in time? What do we know? We've got our first point, And we now know, in terms of our second point, we know um, Vx2 and Vy2. We know, VX, we know Vx because we've argued, look, that Vx doesn't change. It's just the, it's going to be exactly the same no matter what. Um, and Vy we've just calculated. Don't, don't read that as a squared, by the way. It's just meant the second, the second uh, velocity calculation. Okay. So what do we do? Well, we just repeat the process again in a loop. So what we did is we used S equals UT. So let's apply that again. Um, so Sy which is our next one, so I'm going to do S, Y, where should I put this 2? I'm going to put this 2 at the back here rather than um, at the front, uh, so it doesn't look like a squared or anything. Uh, our, our second displacement in Y is equal to uh, UT plus a half AT squared from the equations of motion, um, but this time I need to feed in the velocity I've just calculated, which was this V, Y, 2 times the time. Now this is where you've got to be careful with the time, okay, because if you're doing a, we're not, because of this approach, you can't just use delta t, you've got to use t plus delta t. Does that make sense? Because I, if you, the other methods we've looked at, like the Euler method, you, you're just simply putting delta t in and then the velocity is added. In this case, I have to make sure it's, it's delta t plus delta t, and the next, well, so that's two delta t in other words. The next step will be three delta t, four delta t, five delta t. Does that make sense? Because I have to, I have to add the time in other words, because of the approach we're doing. So in this case, I want to multiply that by two uh, delta t, which is two times 0 0.1 minus a half at squared. So I've got a half times 9.81 times... Uh, same problem again, time afterwards, which is uh, 2 times 0 0.1 squared. Okay, gives me the new position of SY. When I want to calculate X again, which is what I do to give me my next point, S, X, the second one, is always equal to UT, no acceleration, no gravity, and that is equal, therefore, um, to U. We, we argued that the, use, um, sorry, the uh, velocity was never going to change in this direction, so that was always going to be V um, sine, V cos, sorry, V cos theta, yep, times the time, and the time is 2 times 0 0.1. Okay, that gives me my next point which is I'm doing these as S's but you get the idea okay okay so that gives me my second point along my trajectory so let's come back here again so this may have been here for example okay so we can do this we can just repeat this along here. Uh, 
that's not really neat. Um, you can repeat this until the Y position, yeah, um, which we, we were doing as a kind of an S. Um, whatever that number is, I don't know how many iterations I've gone through the loops, I'm just going to put an N down here. You can do that until that is less than some small tolerance, because we're talking about computers here. I can't, I, ideally, I want to say equal zero, but if you try to say equal zero in an if loop, it won't work, okay, because you don't, you don't want to compare um, floating point numbers. So what we do is we ask the question, look, if I've calculated a point that's gone under the, under the x-axis, yeah, where y is less than zero, then I know... Um, the thing's landed, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so if we come back to our trajectory, it, I'm making this point here where I'm saying that um, at here, once it goes through that blue line, the y position is less than zero, you stop. Okay, we, we're not, there's no point in calculating trajectory that's going through the earth, the, the thing's landed, the ball's landed. Does that make sense? It, it's just a computational trick. Okay, because we, we need to stop at this point here. Okay. So, um, this is an approach. There are others, um, as we've explained in the lecture notes, but this is an approach you can take okay, in here. 